So welcome to strategy tip video number three. In this video, we're going to be going over a topic which has the potential to make a big difference to your race results. So let's get started. All right, so today we're going to be covering deciding your route up the beat. We're going to start with some basics and progress to more advanced stuff as the video goes on. Um, this is tip video number three, but it doesn't matter which order you watch from in. So feel free to continue this video and watch the other tips another time. So let's get started. Here we have our start line, wind direction, first mark. Uh, so this is our beat, our upwind leg. And we have a choice before we start of which side we go. We may want to go left, we may want to go right or we may want to stick closer to the centre. And which way we go will be determined by several factors. We may find we want to go left because there's some advantage on the left side. And we may find there's another advantage on the right side and we don't know which way to go because we have to weigh them up. We may find we want to stay in the middle because it's a shifty day and we don't want to be stuck off to one side when the wind shift isn't favourable for us to come back into the centre of the course. So which side we choose can be influenced by several factors such as wind, strength and direction. Tide, again strength and direction. Shock, wind, wind bends, other boats, and ley lines. We don't want to be going out to the ley lines uh, unless there's a really good reason to do so. So before the start, you want to be taking into account all these factors and making a pre-race plan, which will dictate your route up the beat. Sometimes it will be obvious. There might be uh, loads more wind out on the left side. And so you're going to want to go out to the left side. But other times it won't be so obvious. There might be more wind on this side but there might also be more chop, which might slow you down. So now I'm going to show you a little demonstration, which hopefully will demonstrate how we take into account all these factors in deciding our route up the beat. So let's imagine this is all the reasons to go out to the right on the beat, and this is all the reasons to go out to the left. If there is more weight on the right side, that means we should go out right. And if there's more weight on the left side, we should go out left. So we have some weights here. Let's imagine that in this scenario, the wind strength on the right side of the course is significantly more than the left so and that is a significant part of our strategy so we're going to give it quite a big weight and put it over here so you also believe there's a persistent shift that will favor going out left and you believe this is just as important as the more wind on the right so they equal each other out and so neither side is favored at the moment but there might be other factors which are perhaps lesser factors such as chop. So there might be more chop on the left side of the course that will slow you down. So that might deduct some advantage from going out left. So rather than a 200 weight, we're going to have a 100 weight. And now our right side is clearly favoured. So to give you another example, let's imagine that this time there is more wind on the left side of the course, but there's an advantageous wind bend that you get when you go out right. So in this scenario, you think that the wind is a stronger factor and so that outweighs the wind bend you go by, get by going out right. So there's an advantage in this case of going to the left side of the course. So with this weighing up of different factors, you can form your pre-race plan. But what if something happens mid-beat that changes this? For instance, maybe because the left side is favored in this example and there's more wind on that side, the whole fleet is going over that side which might actually make it less favoured because you're going to be likely travelling in dirty wind and having to tap more. So say you think that's quite a big factor and you've still got this wind bend out there, you might decide that it's now advantageous to change tack as it were and head out to the right. So hopefully this example explains how we're weighing up multiple different factors against each other to come to a conclusion about which way to go up the beat. It's certainly not easy weighing up all these factors and you'll never be 100% correct, but if you practice, you'll intuitively get better at doing this over time. 
unless the advantage is really big, it's unlikely you want to bang out to one side because once you've banned the corner, you've got no strategical options left. So if something that you don't predict happens, such as the wind shifts unpreferably, then you're saving half the beat on the header. Also, the advantage you thought might be on one side might disappear. So it's often not a good idea to get too greedy and bang all the way out one side. A good compromise is to take the shifts but take every opportunity to get out to that favoured side. So if there is a left shift at the start, you'll still be heading out to the unfavoured side, but you're going to take every opportunity to get out to this side. So if the wind shifts back to the middle or further, you are going to be tacking over to get towards this side. So there will be times when you find that no side is advantage, your mental scales are level as it were. But there are things that may sway which tack we go on. For instance, if the bulk of the fleet is out towards the right side of the course, you probably don't want to be splitting away from them for no reason. So try to stick with the fleet, uh, providing you don't get too much dirty wind. So to reiterate, if your mental scales are balanced as in this scenario, then you want to be on port tack, heading out towards the right side so that you can stick with the bulk of the fleet. In a similar vein, if you're not sure which tack to be on, and someone tacks on top of you giving you dirty wind, they make your decision for you because you're obviously gonna to want to tack out of there and get into some clean air. Also, if you're mid beat and you're not sure which side to go and you're more towards the right side of the course, then you probably wanna be taking opportunities to get back into the center because if you're on the right side and the advantage comes in on the left side, then you've got a lot further to go to get towards it. So the last thing I'll mention is if you are, say, the blue bank and someone puts a tack on top of you, giving you dirty wind, then you probably do want to go out, unless there's a huge advantage on this side, so you probably do want to tack and get out of that dirty wind. But don't let that make you think you should carry on on that tack. Presumably, you were on this tack for a reason, so if that reason still applies, you should carry on only so far as you need to to get out of that dirty wind and then put a tack back. You may try and convince yourself that you want to go out this way because you want to sail the perfect race. But something's already gone wrong because someone's tacked in front of you and you can't control that. You just have to sail the race from here on in. So you just have to get really good at putting the past behind and saying what is the best plan of action from now on. So that's all for today. If you found the video valuable and you want to see future videos, you might want to consider pressing the subscribe button and then the bell icon and YouTube will send you notifications every time I post a video. See you next time.